standards from our education system. I'm the former Frank Key. But the Northwest has to really need somebody different. Your career, you're used to winning a lot. It was everything to us. Seven or eight weeks of two days. They really made me appreciate we're allowed to win. And he's coming in and we'll be shooting the whole time. Let's go back real quick to the, the Enid Walker thing. Of course, we have training in confined space. Legitimately, you know, I could say the tip on that, Steve. Put my hat on and getting out there and doing the job. The television model that you watched growing up. Houston, this is the International Space Station. City Connections begins right now. Hello, I'm Steve Kine with the City of Enid. Thank you for joining me again today on City Connections. My special guest is the um, uh, insurance commissioner or commissioner of insurance. We'll, we'll get the right sequence here in just a moment, but our very special guest took time to be here at the Enid Television Network Studios today, John Doak. And John uh, took office in uh, January of 2011. And according to his bio, which is very extensive, I'm just going to give you a snapshot of the commissioner. His goal was very simple, and it was everything to do, everything possible that he could do to improve the lives of Oklahoman. And uh, he's done that, done that with some groundbreaking initiatives, his fiscal conservatism, and an un unwavering commitment to public service. Commissioner Doak's visionary efforts include hosting the National Tornado Summit, other accomplishments include holding the state's first ever rate hearing on earthquake insurance premiums. Uh, Commissioner Doak is an active member of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, where he serves as chair of the Property and Casualty Insurance Committee and chair of the Anti-Fraud Task Force. And he shapes important national insurance policy issues as a member of the Governmental Relations Leadership Council. Commissioner Doak, you may hear him from time to day time to time, I should say, say boomer sooner, because he graduated from the University of Oklahoma with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science degree. And shortly after college, he launched a successful business, uh, insurance business in Tulsa, and later served as a executive for several risk and insurance service companies. And I was introduced to the commissioner oh, 10, 11 years ago when we sat together at a table a few times in regard to our Rotary Club membership in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So it makes a very small world, but uh, it's amazing how our lives intersect again. And I'm very honored and privileged to introduce our Enid audience to the Commissioner of Insurance, John Doak. Well, thank Commissioner, you. Commissioner, thank you for stopping off in Enid, Oklahoma. We appreciate your time. Little did we know 11 years ago at Rotary. That's we, right, we'd we, be sitting right we here. We would together. be doing this, so. Well, it's a pleasure to be back here in Enid and, uh, and to, to do this show with you. And uh, this is just such a great aspect of the Enid community to be able to deliver this type of programming sure. to this part of the state. So congratulations, and it is good to see you again. Uh, you, know, you never know when you're sitting across the rotary table when you're <laughs> going to see somebody uh, exactly. again. And I should say, you know, 11 years later, you haven't changed a bit. Oh, thank you, okay. thank you. <laughs> Even with all the stress you've gone through, you haven't changed a bit. Now I'm waiting for you to say the same yeah, about Yeah, absolutely. Me. You look great. Yeah. You look great. <laughs> okay, the Oklahoma Insurance um, Commissioner, uh, let me just simply ask you, with your background in insurance, University of Oklahoma, a business owner and all of that, how does that prepare you for the role? Because this is a statewide opportunity. It has to be um, very challenging. Right. So how did all that, you know, all that, you know, education and, and experience prepare you for the role today? Well, I think as you look back on it, as all of us kind of look back through our careers and we see how God kind of shapes the things that we're going through and the journey that we're on and um, being a young student at the University of Oklahoma, being a political science major, I think my wife would tell you that she always knew that I was going to run for office. She just didn't know <laughs> what it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, but I had the opportunity while at OU uh, to have a couple of folks that really kind of shaped my, my, some of my political views. Uh, a former Governor Henry Bellman, I had the opportunity to sit in one of his classrooms, okay. and then uh, Neil McCaleb was one of my uh, professors as well. Uh, but to be able to see that, fast forward into the private sector after graduating from OU and spending a career in insurance, um, you know, at the time that the 2010 elections kind of came around, it was something that I looked at and I thought, there's an opportunity there for uh, someone with my skill set to run. Um, I always had wanted to do something in the public arena, uh, so I was very fortunate to be elected by the people of Oklahoma and uh, have been in this job now seven, a little over seven years. Uh, it's just been very exciting. For someone to say insurance is exciting, you know you have to like it, right? So, uh, but there's a lot of different aspects and uh, it impacts, you know, every life in Oklahoma. So that's one of the things and it's been a 
pleasure and honor to get to serve the people of Oklahoma. As I've traveled uh, every county of Oklahoma just about six times around the state, I've met a lot of great folks, but I also know that insurance matters. And sure. uh, I know we're going to get into some more details, but uh, we live in a state that's got a lot of different issues, and uh, in insurance is very important. Well, this is a real treat for me. I've never interviewed the insurance commissioner for the state of Oklahoma, so I appreciate you being here. And the fact that your office extends into 77 counties, that may be overwhelming uh, at times. And so that leads me into this question. People may see you on the news, commissioner, or they may see you walking a uh, disaster site or something That's like right. that. And they go, well, I know we have this insurance commissioner, uh, but what does he really do? Can you kind of uh, give us this sure. uh, short look on... Your job is good. Absolutely. The, the, the primary duties of the insurance commissioner for the state of Oklahoma is one, solvency of insurance companies because we want them to be uh, sound financially. They want, we want them to have the ability to pay claims during these catastrophe events that you, sure. that you talk about. So the other trigger is sound, solvent companies. And the other is really on the market conduct side is we want companies uh, that are doing business in the state of Oklahoma. And there's well over 1,800 different companies that do business here on uh, different lines of coverage. We want them to treat Oklahomans fairly. We want them to pay claims. We want them to do the right thing. People are paying a premium um, that you, you know, in insurances, you typically can't see, feel, or touch it until your home's gone, right. your car's damaged, um, you have a death claim, uh, something makes one of those triggers happen. So those are the two triggers of sound, financially solvent companies uh, and make sure that they, uh, that they treat people fairly. And the other issue, which we've t taken head on squarely, probably more so than any other insurance commissioner in Oklahoma history, is to educate the general public on insurance matters. And I know we'll get into that, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, highlight that on some PSAs in the future uh, on your channel here so some of the folks in Northwest Oklahoma uh, can begin to see those. But uh, it's been an honor to be able to work with folks. Uh, I'm on the phone just about every day with an Oklahoma consumer, still handling issues myself. Uh, to help them with a medical issue, with a home issue, an automobile issue. But we've got great consumer services and dedicated employees uh, that wor really work very hard uh, for the people of Oklahoma. Our special guest today on City Connections is the uh, State of Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner, John Doak. And Commissioner, in preparation for this uh, visit today, I was kind of just kind of thinking about insurance questions and I uh, got to thinking about the state of Oklahoma, how unique that we might get a nine inch rain from a hurricane that came up from the Gulf. Correct. We all know about tornadoes. We all understand about the earthquake stuff that's going on. Oklahoma's kind of unique with all the disaster possibilities that can happen. And so in this research, I got to thinking, I wonder what other states, California seems to have mudslides or earthquakes yeah. or fires, but I wonder compared to other states, what it's like. So. Since you're involved in all these national committees, you're able to rub shoulders with all these other commissioners, and you learn from other states as well. Tell us how unique it is in your role compared to uh, New Mexico or another you state. Bet. You bet. Because it's got to be very unique. Well, first of all, I think one of the key issues about Oklahoma is that I'm very proud of is Oklahoma, I think there's 11 other states that have elected commissioners. So I'm an elected by the people of Oklahoma to serve the people of Oklahoma. And I feel that gives me a unique connection to uh, work with them to make sure that the insurance companies are treating them fairly. Uh, and the rest of the commissioners around the United States and the U.S. territories are appointed. Uh, so they're appointed by their governor. Um, so that's one unique uh, difference there. Uh, so proud to be elected. But when you look at the uh, catastrophes and the things around the country, you know, our hearts go out to my good friends uh, that are in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico that uh, they're still without power. They're still having difficult issues. Uh, those are remote areas that uh, aren't as well suited for, uh, you know, a catastrophe is like a, what Oklahoma is here, you know, geographically in the center of the United States. Our, our, our hearts go out to uh, the folks in California. Commissioner Dave Jones in California has done a wonderful job, but the wildfires, you just flip on the TV right sure. now and you see the wildfires. Oklahoma right now is under some wildfire watches ourselves. Uh, we've experienced that. 
not to the level of California, but then you move to Florida, you know, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas from the hur recent hurricanes and the, uh, the amount of claims that they're having there is when you've lost everything, um, that's a very, very difficult thing to comprehend for those folks that are watching. Uh, but Oklahoma is unique. We get a mixture of, of all of those really except for hurricane effects. We do get the rain, uh, but more importantly, we get the, uh, the 32nd hailstorms, which can be very, very damaging. We get the city of Moore, for example, has been sure. hit three times. Uh, all parts of Oklahoma, you can get a tornado in any month of the year, as we know, uh, and some of those are more unique than others, but we typically think of spring weather in Oklahoma. But again, you know, I've been pushing and talking about some reforms that need to be made in building codes relative to Oklahoma to, to, make, to build things stronger, fortify them to withstand higher winds. These things are not going away. Oklahoma is a, has a history of, of this type of weather patterns. Some years we miss it, some right. we catch it. But again, it's, uh, that, that, I think when folks think of Oklahoma, hence we have, the, uh, uh, have founded uh, the nonprofit which uh, hosts the National Tornado Summit in Oklahoma City, which has become one of the largest conventions Oklahoma City has. And we've drawn from folks, uh, last year we had over 700 folks and people that come in from all over the world uh, from the reinsurance area, from Lloyd's of London to the Bermuda markets to other places that experience weather like we do. So it's uh, something that we've decided to address head on. With you sharing that, I remember the times that uh, I lived in Tulsa, and in a particular December, it seemed like there was an ice storm, a snowstorm, and then there was like a December 22nd tornado. So uh, as we all live in Oklahoma, we, uh, we get used to uh, a and, variety and, of... And, and we've even had uh, you know, significant ice storms uh, through, the, well, through sure. the December, January, if you remember yeah. a few years back, that really kind of crippled parts of Oklahoma. Sure. We were talking before a visit on camera today about... I've never really experienced a disaster, but I do recall from a hailstorm, skylight was blown out, uh, some windows really damaged, and things were really beat up. I mean, when you have baseball-sized hail, it, it really beat things up. And we felt just a tinge of, uh, oh, what do we do now kind of deal. And, and even though the house was still standing, we're in great health, things were kind of beat up. I can't imagine if I was standing there just seeing a slab to my home after a storm went through. This leads in, Commissioner, to this question. What does your office do when, let's say, uh, a tornado or just a major storm happens and people have lost so much? Right. What do you, uh, what's the office it, do? It, it gets, there's really a number of things that we do. And through the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, we have the ability to draw upon other good resources from other states to kind of learn of best practices from the states that, that we've mentioned, um, those commissioners and those states that have gone through disaster. So we, what we've done behind the scenes is early on we begin to look at that. We looked at the, we should be prepared ahead of time because we know these disasters are going to happen. Let's take more 2013 for example. You have 80,000 claims that happened there in that area. Uh, and how do, you, how do you meet the needs of that community, whether it's Enid, Woodward, Tulsa, McAllister, uh, you know, wherever that might be, uh, how do you prepare for that? So we in implemented um, a field staff early on that, that really canvasses the state of Oklahoma to develop relationships, work with emergency managers, to also be a direct tie to the insurance community. So for example, when that happened in Moore, we set up what is actually been called the first ever insurance village and uh, folks listening they're like what is that well uh, we decided that uh, in working with governor fallon that it would be best with albert ashwood emergency management to centrally locate all of the insurance services and at that particular time if folks remember we used uh, we were fortunate enough to use first baptist moore church parking right. lot right. and we had 30 to 45 different buses that were there where consumers could come in and they could get their claim handled efficiently they could begin the process they could work with their local banks we worked with the Oklahoma Banking Commission and we found out that during a time of major disaster when you don't have anything you don't have all you have is a driveway on your house you don't have your policy right. you don't have your checkbook you don't have your wallet we begin to work with a couple of things is and some innovative insurance companies now said we're gonna give you when you file a claim we're gonna give you a credit card with a cash advance on it. 
which means when you go spend that those dollars with certain insurance companies, you don't have to keep track of all of those receipts and things. So you go to the Western Sizzler, you go to Walmart, or you get you go to the uh, hotel. All of those receipts are captured because at the time of a loss, that money that is advanced to the consumer actually is is a payment, and those things have to be tracked. And that's one of sure. the things that consumers really don't understand. They said, well, this is my money, but it is their money, but they have to keep it an accountability of that of those funds. So when a major loss happens, they're going to advance sometimes the most amount of money an Oklahoman has ever had, tens of thousands of dollars to get you on the right foot. One of the other areas there that uh, we have worked on is working with the health insurance companies because you think of folks that have kids at home that are on medications. You have sure. senior adults that have lost their medications. You have adults that have um, life-saving medications that they don't have. How do we work with them? So we now have a network of working with our Oklahoma health insurers to get emergency refills of medications, to get those things taken care of. No one ever thinks about that. Right. When you know they're showing the hurricane on TV or the tornado in Oklahoma, because um, some of those folks are saying, that's really not their first thing, is take care of the person. Take care of yourself, clothes, shelter, medications, uh, kids that are on, you know, uh, really life-threatening, they need certain medications. So we've developed a way to, to really uh, pioneer that. And I think we've helped other states and other communities with what we've learned from our disasters in sharing some of that information. Commissioner, from time to time, it, it seems like it makes it to the local news channel that after a storm has taken place or a disaster has taken place, and this is not just Oklahoma, this is across the country, that you'll hear reports of maybe someone paying for a service mm -hmm. and that contractor or that uh, whatever service provider took the money and ran or something like that. And so uh, what, um, you know, words of wisdom can you share with our viewers in regard to if a disaster happens and they're on the, on the rebound, they're on the right. rebuild, what, what would you recommend for them to do when it comes to getting the right service provider? Well, unfortunately, um, we know from, from all the events that we've been through and really all across the United States, I testified before the United States Senate on uh, fraud activity here recently. Um, and it's a, it is a big, big number for the United States. And we know that folks, unfortunately, at the time of a catastrophe, many times the elderly are the first to be taken advantage of. Folks that come through that say, your roof has got partial damage, let me take care of that. Give me a check for that, give sure. me cash for that. Let me take care of that tree damage. Let me, you know, I need a payment for that. Many times in major catastrophes of a very significant level, we have folks that come in from around the United States into Oklahoma. Um, and when, one, we need that. But two, we want to make sure that those are reputable contractors, that a consumer, if they do begin work on your home um, or on your property, that you have a way to find them. So we've been working with uh, local communities uh, to be able to kind of understand that dynamic. But again, those, those types of things, those fraud activities, they do happen. It's unfortunate. Um, whether it's in the automobile side or on the home side. Unfortunately, we have unscrupulous contractors. We have many, many reputable contractors sure, in the state sure. of Oklahoma. And right here in Enid, I would say, man, go to your Enid phone book. Go to the website for Enid businesses. And if that company has been here, you have a relatively high degree of confidence sure, that sure. they're going to be here to take care of your damage. So again, working through that, making sure some of those payments are made, but we have a very active fraud unit and we get out ahead of these. We've got a couple of fraud units um, that sometimes work 24 seven in areas that have major damage. One, we work with local law enforcement, like we would partner with uh, the, the, the local sheriff here, which we've had in the past, and the local police department. Uh, we can provide resources that they don't have because at a time of a catastrophe, they may be out kind of cordoning, off, cordoning streets off, uh, working on public safety. Insurance fraud is not the thing that comes to the top of the mind. Sure. So we've got a great law enforcement unit that covers the entire state, um, that works with them in the off season and during the season. If the local law enforcement agencies here want to have some training on particular areas, we can provide that. But again, when they see our anti-fraud unit show up, which is a marked unit, we've actually seen contractors get in their car and leave, which is exactly what we want to happen. 
I appreciate what you're sharing because going back to that storm that impacted uh, my family, it seemed like we were a magnet and all of our neighbors were magnets. And I kept seeing all these license tags on trucks that I go, how did they get here? And I, I, don't, I don't mean this in a general statement, right. but it, there just seemed to come out of the woodwork. And I thought, well, why is this? I won't mention the state, but why is it here? That's that's five states away. What are they doing here? Right. So you just have to. Uh, and some of the, some of those folks may be licensed uh, exactly. adjusters from exactly. out of state, which respond to catastrophes. Right. So we want to be very careful about that. But again, we do see that consumers, as you're stating, when they're there uh, taking, twenty minutes later exactly. after the, uh, that's when I was kind of raising the flag. Exactly. Well, we appreciate you sharing this important tips. Well, as, as you know, uh, earthquakes have been a topic in the state for a year or two in North Central, Northwest Oklahoma, and really across the state. So we'll uh, get the opinion of our insurance commissioner for the state of Oklahoma, John Doak, talk to us a little bit about earthquakes and maybe the need for insurance. And we'll do that right after this break. Thank you for staying with us on City Connections. Welcome back to City Connections. I'm Steve Kine with the City of Enid. Thank you for joining us today. A very special guest is our Insurance Commissioner for the State of Oklahoma, John Doak. Commissioner, uh, as you know, earthquakes have been a topic for a variety of people, uh, debates on the causes of earthquakes, but it leads into, uh, we'd like to get the uh, Insurance Commissioner's uh, uh, comments on this or opinion on this. Do people need earthquake insurance? Well, let me answer that because one of the questions that I get all the time is, I personally have earthquake insurance. Um, I think that uh, folks in Oklahoma need to be aware of it. We've done a lot of PSAs on it. Earthquake insurance is something which their licensed agent or needs to sit down and explain to them what it covers and what it doesn't cover. Uh, typical deductibles on earthquake coverage is typically 2, 5, or 10 percent of your home value. Earthquake insurance uh, is, has been historically designed for severity issues. If you think back to the Northbridge earthquakes of, in sure. California um, that uh, were in the seven point range that did hundreds of millions of dollars of damage. In Oklahoma, uh, over the last couple of years, we've had a frequency problem. Frequency is where you have low level uh, seismic activity. Severity is when you have uh, a stronger uh, event, much like what was experienced in Ponca City, uh, for example, I believe over in, in that part of the state. Sure, Pawnee. Um, Pawnee, Pawnee area, yeah. yeah. And, and you see that. They're fortunate that that happened on a, on a, uh, on a weekend evening where there weren't folks around sure. the downtown area and you had things falling. So there's the commercial exposure for earthquake and then there's the residential exposure for earthquake. So that needs to be a personal decision because if you have no insurance, you're basically self-insuring 100% of the loss. If you have no insurance, you're in self-insuring 100% of the loss. So most folks that let that sink in for a little bit. So if you want to protect your personal balance sheet, your home, uh, to the extent that the policy terms and conditions offer, then I would purchase the earthquake insurance um, and have it as a backstop. So that's the decision that the general public needs to make. Um, the, we, again, we continue to have some of the frequency level. The Corporation Commission in Oklahoma, I think, has done a good job with some of their uh, new uh, sure. measures that they have in place. But again, it, we have been one of the most seismic activity, uh, active places on the planet for the last few years outside of probably Alaska. Um, we've done a lot on earthquake education. Uh, again, that's something that we felt uh, the governor signed an emergency order for licensed insurance agents and brokers to go through training because I felt they needed to have more training to explain that to the general public to kind of use as a multiplier. And we know that we've had, I think, over 20,000 agents have gone through that training. So we feel that that's a, one of the best ways to get to the consumers uh, on that. So again, we've uh, been in the New York Times to uh, Time Magazine to Wall Street Journal talk, you know, with all the issues related to the, the issues that we've had in Oklahoma. Sure. Building codes, again, you come back to that building code discussion. We have, we've got places in Oklahoma that the first thing they're losing are their, are their chimneys. 
Well, those chimneys weren't built to very strong building codes to withstand that. So we need to learn from some things. So when I talk about fortifying Oklahoma building codes, it, it not only will help the, the convective storm tornado side of things uh, and the high winds that we have, but that also should shore up some of those frequency issues of losing some of those brick facades right. uh, on homes. Um, so again, read your policy. Uh, we're probably going to come back to that, uh, you know, in a few minutes. But again, that's uh, that's my comment. We've held uh, a an event with uh, the National Association of, of Insurance Commissioners a couple of years ago in Chicago called All Things Earthquake. We brought together all the best and the brightest insurance folks to kind of talk about the issue, and we had some folks from Oklahoma in talking about the issue. So my lane of traffic is insurance, and we want to make sure that consumers know what an insurance policy does, and then it's up to them. No bank, no mortgage says you have to have insurance, have, you have to have earthquake insurance, even, even in California, believe it or not. So Oklahoma, we do know, has, I believe now, a higher take-up rate, more people buying earthquake coverage than the state of California. Interesting. But there's a dynamic that's a, there. That's a great trivia question. <laughs> but, but the interesting yeah. point there is most folks, you, you know, they look at it, and some of the folks in California and in Oklahoma, um, they couldn't afford the deductible on the insurance, so they may be returning the keys to their mortgage company sure. if they had a total yeah. loss like what happened in the, in the Cushing area. The topic of earthquakes has been really interesting, and I can relate just a little bit, because I remember getting calls from the New York Times and just different mm -hmm. East Coast newspapers, if you will, and even when we had some storms, Weather Channel would call. As public, sure. public relations director, they would call the city of Enid and tell us about, well, what's the earthquakes like or what's the tornadoes like. So um, sometimes Oklahoma can be the, the center of attention when things like this take place. But I can't, but I can't tell you, I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that in the California earthquakes, you think about some folks say, well, my insurance company has never paid a claim. Well, you look back to the Northbridge earthquake yeah. claims, and in the matter of a few seconds, they paid out more insurance premiums than they took in in the previous 20 or 30 years in, inside of one day. So the amount of claims and losses and infrastructure damage, if we were to have a significant earthquake or along the New Madras Fault, would be staggering to the communities. Business interruption coverage, if you're a small business, uh, uh, through some of our friends at, uh, at FEMA and the National Catastrophe side, we know that what would you do? They have, a, they have an event called a day without business. If all of your business and infrastructure in the city of Enid or surrounding areas were shut down and you couldn't operate due to bridges and things, that has a direct financial impact to every small business owner in the area. So there's many things that we can learn. Um, but again, if you have a small business, you need to think about that. What happens if there's an earthquake uh, and my business, I, I cannot function. It may not impact my business, sure. but how do I continue to pay bills? And that business income uh, con or business continuation coverage is something that is not talked about a lot, but it can sometimes pay out more than the actual policy for a building. I like your comment when you say it's something you need to think about it, because I remember the one time being locked out of my house, and that was really the first time I thought about it. I said, okay, this house is so, so secure. But boy, I can't even get in my own house. I hadn't thought about what would happen if I was locked out of the house. Uh, on the beginning of the show, and I was sharing with everyone your extensive bio, which again was just a half, half of all the, the things that the commissioner has been involved in, uh, you are on national committees. And as viewers watching the show and say, well, he's representing the state of Oklahoma, how does your role in these national committees, how does that benefit us Oklahomans, if I can say that, and in your role as the insurance commissioner. Absolutely, the Oklahoma the Oklahoma insurance market is really uh, we're 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 dependent upon companies that are housed in other states and other places around okay. the world. Lloyd's of London is where a lot of the insurance is kind of the waltz is kind of the the stock exchange sure. of the insurance market. Lloyd's of London. Uh, so many of the reinsurance products and things that are designed come through Lloyd's. We have other countries now. Insurance is a very, very small knit, uh, really, group when you start to think about it because we've got companies from all over the world that are now in specific lines of insurance. And we need that in Oklahoma. We need to make sure that we've got a, a competitive free market situation for the state of Oklahoma, whether it's for homeowners insurance, 
whether it's for automobile insurance or whether it's for life insurance or annuities or commercial uh, uh, coverages that may be uh, you know, in the oil and gas sector or whatever, you know, the, the, the agribusiness for Oklahoma, uh, for farmers and ranchers. Many of these companies are based at other places in the world. And so it's a great opportunity for me to be on the international committee currently for the NAIC. I chair the C committee, which is all the casualty committees, uh, companies in the United States, uh, really kind of report to the C committee, which I've been chair of for this past year. Um, don't know what that'll look like next year with our new uh, incoming president. I kind of serve at their pleasure. But I also have had some international appointments where I've had the ability to talk on national uh, catastrophes, to be able to share with emerging countries on issues that we've learned through Oklahoma issues, U.S. disaster issues. But I've also been able to learn what, uh, you know, for example, on earthquakes. What is uh, our friends from Japan and Tokyo, what are they doing? They have got some extensive sure. education there because they're more susceptible to tsunamis and earthquakes uh, in different parts of the world that have impacted natural catastrophes. So that's something that I've really taken a great honor and a great privilege in is to represent the United States to sit at uh, a table recently in, in Paris to talk about uh, what, what is a, what's meaningful for the United States relative to catastrophes and policies. Uh, so whether it, it's keeping companies solvent that do business here from other places. So it's, it's really given me an opportunity to, uh, to represent the people of Oklahoma, which is something I'm very proud of. In your comment, you just mentioned uh, briefly something about property or, or home property insurance. And Commissioner, from time to time when I get a statement or just updates from my insurance company, they will list in there the, the importance of documenting your possessions, your jewelry, baseball, baseball card collection, whatever it may be. Uh, what advice would you share with our viewers in regard to personal property? Is the videotape the way to go? Is it just taking still pictures? What's, yeah. what's the recommendation? Well, I think common sense is the thing. That, um, the NAIC, National Association of Insurance Commissioners, has an app, uh, a uh, inventory app, uh, that consumers can use. That is a great, they can download it on their phone. They can, they can then take the pictures and designate uh, where things are going, where they're located in their home. So the National Association of Insurance Commissioners has done a really great job of, and we push that out through the Oklahoma Department of Insurance through our partnership with them. Uh, so that, that inventory app is really very, very good. And we try to get consumers to think about this all throughout the year, not just during, in Oklahoma, spring season. We're just ending up hurricane season uh, on the coastal areas. But if, if you can't do that, just take, I think, taking pictures. Pictures are going to be worth a lot of money if you have them on your phone or in the cloud of your, take pictures of your closets, take pictures of, uh, of all those shoes that our wives have, all the, <laughs> all the clothes, all the attics, all the collections, and be able to sit down with your licensed agent or broker because you mentioned baseball cards. Your typical homeowner's policy may have a specific limit on those baseball cards or collectibles cufflinks, jewelry, guns, uh, other collectibles. So you might need what's called a floater, uh, an additional floater on those types items. If you want to have your, your wedding ring covered with a zero deductible anywhere in the world in case you lose it, you can add that as an endorsement. Much like if you have a high value auto that's sitting in your garage, an antique car, you want to have what's called a stated value policy where you know that that's been verified and if your, your home collapses, right, on top of that car, sure. which has happened in Oklahoma, then you know that car, that, that antique auto, um, I'm going to get a check for this amount. So again, it's just making that most consumers in the United States and in Oklahoma, it's unfortunately, never read their policy, they never pick it up, and they don't understand it until it comes time for that loss, even though you may have been, had insurance for 40 or 50 years. So it's uh, something that we really try to work with. So understand those specific limits. Computers now, if you've got kids away at college like I do, you need to understand what they're, what's covered at their dorm room. And if you need to add additional coverage for high value items, you need to do that. Now, cell phones are, you know, we know that there's new cell phones on the market that are between $1,000 and $1,500. So you need to understand those limits. A little bit out of my price range on those phones, by the way. <laughs> but there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Let me ask you this. Again, as we talked earlier, oftentimes individuals will see you at a uh, disaster event or even speaking at a summit or, or a seminar or things of this nature. Is there something that your office 
does that um, people just don't know about that would be a benefit to them? Well, we've got, a, you know, probably a few things. One of the things is we've got a mediation program, which is uh, at okay. no cost to Oklahoma consumers. If they find themselves at an impasse with their insurance company, pick up the phone and call us. Pick up the phone and call us even if you have, you don't know if you have an insurance issue or not. We've got great folks there that, that work on these issues. And insurance companies, when we inquire on their behalf, the, by state statute, the insurance company has 30 days to get back with us. So if you're having difficulty with that claim or you think that your policy was canceled and it was not for a, a, a valid reason or you weren't notified at a specific time or if you're just having difficulty getting that adjuster to get out and see you, um, the last thing insurance companies really want is they want to call from me, which uh, I've happened to have made several personally um, during times of disaster. One of the things is we don't want Oklahomans to, to be given a hard time. We want their claim to be settled quickly, fairly, uh, based upon the terms and conditions of their policies. Sometimes consumers don't understand those terms and conditions of their policy. So that's where that EGLE mediation program comes in. It's, a, it's an acronym for Ending Arguments uh, Gently, Legally, and Easily, uh, which was developed out of yeah. one of our disasters which other states have now used. So again, contact the Oklahoma Insurance Department. Uh, that's probably one of the things is, you know, don't, don't think about it. Just call us and ask us if we can help. That's what we need to be doing, and that's what we've got great people to, to assist with. And I can give you a positive testimony because uh, uh, just a couple months ago, the gentleman, uh, the heat and air guy that comes to my house and services the furnace, had a water problem in his house, and he had some difficulty. However, he called your office, and the problem was resolved really quick, and he was really appreciative of that. So, uh, lead into one of our final questions here, Commissioner. What is the best way, and we'll put this information on the screen as well, what's the best way that people can reach out to your office? Well, a couple, there's a couple of ways. One of them, they can find us on Facebook. I think it's OID411. They can, uh, social media is something that they can track with us. They can send a question in on that. They can also go to our website with where you try to be as, we know there are, there are, Oklahoma, there are some consumers that are not, uh, still don't use their computers. They can still call us on the phone. We'll send them out a form that, which they can fill out, a consumer uh, a request for assistance form. Uh, but they can also find that on our website at oid.ok.gov uh, or through the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, if they can remember that, naic.org, I believe is what it is, National Association of Insurance Commissioners or Oklahoma Department of of insurance, find the form, fill that out, hit the electronic button, send it in, uh, and we will, you know, wherever you are in the 77 counties of Oklahoma, we don't want you to have to drive to Tulsa or Oklahoma City if right. there's a key issue. We will, that's why we have field reps that will meet you right here in Enid at a, at a, at a public facility uh, to be able to help you with that, those questions. So again, it's our job to serve the people of Oklahoma. If you've got a fraud issue, if you suspect fraud, contact us. We will have one of our fraud officers that will come meet you at your local law enforcement uh, office or they'll meet you, you know, at your home. But we don't want anyone thinking that our department is not designed, specifically designed, to serve all 77 counties, which is something that we've been very proud of. And your comments are very refreshing to me and I'm sure to our viewers to know that you're you're working on our behalf, so thank you very much. The best part is our office has, has worked under budget uh, for the last oh. seven years and one of the things in the local media we are audited every year which is something that we're very proud of so we've uh, we've been able to deliver more services over the last few years uh, and come in under budget which is something I'm very proud of our employees at the Oklahoma Department of Insurance have worked very hard very good from the Oklahoma Insurance Department the Commissioner John Doak uh, taking his time today to visit with us here at the Enid Television Network. Uh, we're going to take this short break, but the commissioner has some closing comments that he wants to share with you, and he'll do that right after this. Hello again, thank you for staying with us on this very uh, enlightening and informative subject on insurance here in the state of Oklahoma with the Commissioner John Doak. Uh, and the Commissioner has uh, agreed uh, to uh, offer some closing comments in regard to insurance in Oklahoma. I'm not sure what he's going to say, but I know it's going to be good. And so here's Commissioner John Doak. 
Well, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here, and we hope to have the ability to come back and share some of our, our PSAs and other timely topics uh, for, your, for your listeners and viewers in this area. But again, thank you for allowing me to serve the people of Oklahoma. After seven years of being in this role, uh, it's been one of the great honors that I've had of, of my life. And one of the things is, is to meet the needs of Oklahomans during times of major catastrophes. And uh, for them to know that uh, our office is going to be there uh, for your needs. I hope that if you're watching this that you may never need um, to talk to the insurance commissioner's office if you've lost your home or your car or you're trying to find a life insurance policy for a loved one. Uh, there are many things that we can help with. But again, uh, it's really my, my prayer for your safety, for your home safety, um, in, in the questions uh, that you might have. I just encourage you to sit down with your licensed agent or broker, read your policies before you actually need them. Uh, many consumers, uh, after they've lost everything, they say, I wish I would have looked at that policy. But again, not all policies are created equal. And shop your policies every three to four years. Sit down with the competitors. Understand what some of the changes are. But again, from the Oklahoma Insurance Department, um, if you're watching this and have a question related to uh, anything that, it, that you might need, we have been very, very successful, which we didn't really talk about, was we have a lost life policy locator service. If you believe that you have had or been the beneficiary of a life insurance policy, contact the Oklahoma Department of Insurance. We have a unique way of checking that free of charge, and 100% of those life proceeds will come back to you. Uh, we've been able to help around the United States with this. We've found several policies that were Oklahomans that they didn't know that they had. So again, lost life policy locator service uh, is one of the key things that you might want to think about. But again, don't hesitate to contact the Oklahoma Department of Insurance, and thank you for letting me serve you, the people of Oklahoma. Well said. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Well, um, whenever we have special guests, and they're all of our special guests, we just really appreciate you taking time to come to Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, we're the 11th largest city, I believe, in the state, but we like to claim that we're a little bit bigger than that. And uh, we, we just appreciate you taking time uh, to visit with us today. We have a, uh, on behalf of uh, Mayor Bill Shuey and the city commissioners, they would like for me to present this coin to you. Uh, Ina turned 123 years wow. ago last year, I believe it was. Wow, well, That's not 123 years old. Okay. It's just simply to remind us that since the land run, Enid has really grown, and it, again, we're up to the 11th largest city, and we're just appreciative for you to be here today so you can place that on your desk, and hopefully you'll be reminded of our visit today. And again, it's been 11 years since our last that conversation, helps. so maybe we can cut it a little bit <laughs> fewer Make, than that. That's but right. again, Commissioner thank John you, Doe. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Very informative. Very Enjoyed it very much. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for joining us on City Connections. I hope you enjoyed our topic today, all about insurance. And again, all the information is on the screen if you need to contact the uh, insurance commissioner's office. Uh, you'll have that inf information there. So again, I uh, hope you enjoyed a guest. It's a real pri uh, privilege for me to uh, have this visit with you. And until this, uh, next time, this is Steve Kine with the City of Enid. Make it a great day. Thank you, everyone.